Hey you guys, how's it going? So this video today is a video where I am coaching a player on uh, the basics of Hearthstone. This guy is a guy who I've never spoken to before making this video. He just uh, messaged me on one of my videos, on the comments uh, of my videos, and he said that he wants to learn uh, a bit more of Hearthstone. And so I said, sure, I will be able to help him and teach him the basics of Hearthstone. But at the time, I had absolutely no idea how new this guy actually was uh, to Hearthstone. I only found out afterwards that he actually only had played two games in the entire Hearthstone. So... Uh, I basically got this guy at the very, very beginning of uh, his Hearthstone career, you could almost say. So he only have played two games uh, in Hearthstone and he said that he wanted to uh, learn a bit more about Hearthstone. So I said, okay, I will try to uh, teach him the basics of Hearthstone. So this guy, uh, as soon as the video begins, you will see... He had absolutely no idea about many of the basics of Hearthstone. He, in fact, didn't even know exactly where to search for cards in the collection manager. Uh, he didn't know the names of any of the cards in Hearthstone. So you will see a lot of the times I say the name of a card and he's searching across the entire screen just to find a card. But... In the end, I basically took his deck, which was absolutely horrible. I actually spectated uh, him before uh, the video started. I spectated him and he made absolutely horrible decisions with uh, board control and he ran all of his guys into the opponent's face, which of course allowed his opponent to get very good trades off of his uh, minions. So he would run his 3-1 uh, guy into the opponent's face and then his opponent had a 1-1 one -one and the 1-1 one -one killed the 3-1. So this guy had absolutely no idea uh, about efficient trading and the health and the attack of minions. So uh, yeah, I basically got this guy when he was just absolutely uh, wet behind the ears and uh, at the beginning you will see there's about 30 minutes or so where I uh, give this guy a lecture about which cards are good, which cards are bad and I take the deck which he has already created, a, a paladin deck, I take that deck and I turn it into something which can actually win games uh, pretty consistently. So yeah guys, this is basically just an hour which I spent with uh, a guy which uh, is one of my subscribers and he's really really new to Hearthstone. And in the end I spent about two hours uh, with him. Uh, I played a few games, I let him spectate me and I spectated him a few times. But in this video you will just see about an hour uh, which I spent uh, with the guy. Just basically where I coached him about deck construction. And then I played a few games uh, and instructed him about the correct plays to make and all of that. This isn't the first time that I've coached a player because uh, some people in the past have messaged me uh, their Skype details and I have coached them over Skype also, but this is the first time that I actually recorded it. Uh, I asked this guy if he would mind me recording him and um, recording our interactions and he said it's absolutely no problem. But this guy definitely is the... Uh, wettest behind the ears I could say out of all of the people who I have coached in the past because in the past I've coached people who have at least a little bit of experience with Hearthstone but I think you guys will see that this guy had absolutely no idea about uh, the basics of Hearthstone basically but that is why I wanted to record it because it's actually quite eye-opening to see how the mind of a 
uh, absolutely new Hearthstone player works. So yeah guys, basically now when the video begins you will see that uh, I am busy coaching him on uh, deck construction and basically all that I did before the video started was that I allowed him to spectate a few of my games so that he can just learn how I play and then I also showed him uh, my deck. So yeah, the next footage that you will see was the uh, live recording from when I uh, coached him over Skype. So yeah guys, I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, there we go. You see? Yes. So, uh, okay, let's see. Um, do you have any filters applied at the moment? I think you have, because it's not showing all of the cards. Or, or uh, go... Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, it was yes, just... my mini paladin. Oh, okay, okay. So let's have a look here. Um, These are for the paladin. Only. Yes, yes. I want to see... Let's go to your neutral cards. I want to see what neutrals you have. Do, so, you said you have... Legendaries. Do you have any legendaries, or uh, you you can just maybe, do a maybe search at the bottom there for legendary. Type there at the search, and then you you type in legendary. Oh, I have one. Okay, yeah. you have Cthulhu. So that's actually not too bad. You can build a Cthulhu deck because Cthulhu deck uh, Cthulhu decks is actually very very powerful because um, you. Uh, get a lot of value from playing the cards that came along with uh, Cthulhu. So uh, just uh, uh, remove the legendary thing there at the bottom. That's the search. Just remove the legendary search uh, to the left. Yes, yes, just remove that. Yeah. And then we uh, go to... He's pretty expensive though. Yes, he is expensive, but... Uh, if we go to the Beckoner of Evil, uh, it is a two mana cost card. So go to the, go to your two mana cost cards uh, of the neutrals. So scroll left to the to the to the left side of your collection. Uh, which one? Uh, Beckoner of Evil. It's a two mana cost. Beckoner of. Oh. Yes, two mana cost. Beckoner of Evil. Uh, uh, one left. Uh, yeah, so uh, first off, remove Goldshire Footman, remove Stone Tusk Boar, uh, Worgen Infiltrator, remove that also, remove River Crocolisk, uh, remove Blessed Champion also, uh, remove the Goldshire Footman and the uh, Stone Tusk Boar at the top. The Goldshire Footman. Uh, how do you call it? A Goldshire Footman. Uh, is the fourth. Footman. Yes, and then also. St I thought they were good for early game. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's not really a good card. Uh, Stone Tusk Boar also remove that one. It's the fifth card. The fifth card from the top. Yes, that one. And then also the Light Justice at the very top. Remove that one. And the two Blessing of Mites at the very top, remove that also. And the Hand of Protection, remove that also. At the very top. And then the River Crocolisk. And the Amani Berserker, remove those. And the Hammer of Wrath, which is the six card, I think, remove those two. I, I, both of them? Yes. All right. And uh, what else? Kurubashi Berserker and Nightblade and Stompike Commando. Remove all of those. Uh, Kurubashi mm. Berserker, Nightblade, Stompike Commando. And then also you were just there. Yeah, okay. Uh, also, uh, Core Hound, remove that. And Guardian of Kings. Yes. Okay. okay. Now the deck, now from here, we can start building. So put in two of the Beckoner of Evils. Uh, 
Okay. Yes. Then you go down to the bottom left and you uh, do a filter for old gods cards. So the bottom left, you will see there the, the, the little... Yes, 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 yes. There. Uh, click there and then you click on old gods. Oh. Yes. Because that way you can filter only cards which came in at the old gods uh, expansion. So there's not really a whole lot of them that you have. Uh, oh, well. You can yeah. put in uh, Crazed Worshipper. So we can yeah. uh, put in uh, Twilight Geomancer isn't a amazing card, but it's it's pretty good, especially if you use Cthulhu. So we can put in uh, one of those. You only have one, we, but because we, we only need I one. I just realized that uh, these are connected. He helps uh, Cthulhu. Yes, because the the whole thing that I said about unfair, Cthulhu is actually very unfair because uh, through the course of the game. You play uh, Beckoner of Evil, and then you play the Crazed Worshipper, and all of those increase the uh, strength of Cthulhu. So then, when turn uh, 10 comes, and you have Cthulhu, then Cthulhu will not just be a 6 attack, 6, six HP guy. You will then be a 10 attack, 10 HP, or 11 attack, 11 HP. So... Um, he will be really quite powerful, and he has a battle cry which is extremely powerful. He damages your opponent for the amount of HP or attack that he has. So, uh, if your Cthulhu is a, a 14 attack Cthulhu, then he will deal 14 damage to your opponent's side of the field. I mean... 14 damage is, is a huge yeah. amount. I mean, you will be able to wipe your op opponent's entire board with that. So uh, that is uh, uh, one of the things that we can use in order to make your deck um, unfair, you could say. So the goal is to bring out your legendary? Yes, yes. And obviously right. you will only be able to do that at at turn 10 but uh, if you can survive until turn 10 then it's obviously <laughs> extremely good so uh, if i survive yes well a lot of the uh, <laughs> games don't even make it to turn 10 as we saw with that game that i played just now i mean uh, i finished it in turn 7 so a lot of the times before you reach turn 10, you will be dead or your opponent uh, will be dead. It's not necessarily your entire deck that depends on Cthulhu because uh, you, you, you shouldn't build your entire deck around one card. Because what happens if you don't draw that one card? You know, you will, uh, you will yes. lose the game if you build your entire deck around one card. So... Uh, the thing with the, with Cthulhu is we put maybe four or five cards into the, your deck, which makes him more powerful, and then the rest of the deck we just build very good, so that even if you don't draw Cthulhu, uh, your deck will still be able to perform very well. So, um, All right, so shall I put the other? No, no, no. Uh, first, let's. Uh, uh, see, there's actually a few cards that you need to craft, but you don't have any dust. Uh, we need 80 dust at the moment. Uh, do you oh. have any gold at the moment, or, or don't you have any? I think uh, it's about uh, 200, maybe. Okay, uh, press done, and then just press no. And then let's see... Uh, if we can buy some packs, go back and then go to the shop. Uh, 240. Okay. Then we buy two old gods packs. Yes. Right. Uh, this one? Yes. So you can buy one uh. and then press OK and then buy another one. Okay. Okay, now we open them. And then... Uh, you can just press exit or click at the side or whatever. Okay, oh, just look. Nope, nope. Here. Yes, open packs. 
and then uh -huh. hopefully we will either get a good amount of dust from them or we will get uh, some good cards which you can uh, put there we got Stuart of Darkshire so already that is very good so let's open the next right. one the next is Is there a chance I get a legendary card here? There is a chance, but uh, it's a very small chance. I think the chance of getting a legendary uh, is 3%. So, uh, when you open a ca uh, card pack, uh, only about 3% of the time you will get a, a, a legendary. But already there, you got a few cards we will, which we will be able to use. So, um, okay. you actually just need to play two standard uh uh, games one you need to win one more standard game basically then you get five free uh, packs and then after that you need to win five standard games then you get another uh, five packs as far as I can remember so we will definitely need to do that uh, uh, should we finish the, the deck? yes we the main deck. Yeah, yes first finish the deck so go to the uh, yes that one then we obviously put in Stuart of Darkshire because that's extremely good. Oh, here. Yes, you don't even need to uh, filter uh, by that, but it's fine. Uh, go back right. uh, to neutral and then let's see. I think you got a few uh, um, more ones. Let's see. Uh, yeah, those aren't all that good. Cult Apothecary is, is relatively good, but I don't think it's really uh, worth it to put it in your deck at the moment. Go back to the uh, normal filter, so remove the old goods filter. Yes, standard. And yep. uh, then... Let's see, go to the uh, Paladin uh, side again. Uh, yes. Let's see. Um, at the moment, uh, you don't have a lot of uh, good cards because you don't have your Paladin at, uh, ra at uh, level 10 yet. I think it's at level 10, which you will get all of the cards. So... You will get a lot okay. of good cards like uh, True Silver Champion is an extremely good weapon. You get that at, I think, level 8 or something like that. But you will get it eventually, you just need to oh. play more. So, uh, well, go to the right. Let's... Oh, you do have True Silver Champion. Okay, that's very good. Put in two... And consecration. Yes, we already have Consecration in there. Uh, put in two of the True Silver Champions. And, okay, we have... Gives you survivability. Yes, and uh, you uh, get a lot more uh, uh, board control. So even if your opponent plays a strong minion, you will be able to gobble uh, two of them up with the True Silver Champion. Because it, it, it's all about uh, uh, removing your opponent's cards efficiently. So... Uh, for instance, if you use Consecration and your opponent has, uh, let's say, five minions on the field, then you used one card in order to get rid of your opponent's five cards. So that's obviously very good. And on average, True Silver will eat up uh, two of your opponent's cards because it has two charges. So you are able to attack twice with the yeah. True Silver Is it, uh is it better than Uther's Hammer? Like this one. Let's, that's, yes, let's, it's, that's... it's much better. Light's Jaster isn't really a, a, a good card. It's good if you go against a deck which has a lot of small, small one health guys, but otherwise it's not really uh, good okay. at all. So, uh, okay. Guardian of Kings is a pretty okay card. I guess we can put in two of those. It's not an amazing card, but I don't think you have much better cards than that. And then we can go to the uh, uh, neutral uh, side. Yes. Uh, I just want to make sure 
Uh, okay, no, no, no. Uh, now that I think about it, we did check if you have any other legendaries, and you only have that Cthulhu one, because otherwise, potentially, yes. we could have disenchanted a um, legendary for dust, because the legendaries give 400 dust, which is quite a lot, and then we could have crafted a few nice cards, but it's not a problem. So, um, go on to the right side. Let me see what else we can put in here. We, we uh, still have nine spots uh two acidic swamp oozes is very good put in two of those and then uh, go to the right side uh, none of these are excellent we could put in acolyte of pain but first let's see what else uh, your deck has to offer so go to the right side uh, uh, shouldn't I use something with taunt? Not necessarily. Uh, the deck which I have, my my uh, uh, paladin deck which I showed you, doesn't have a single taunt in it. So it is it is very possible to build a good deck with uh, without any taunts because um, as long as you control the board, then taunts are uh, inconsequential. Basically, that all a taunt does is it stops your opponent from attacking your face with a weapon. And uh, that's basically what we have the Acidic Swamp Ooze for. Because the Acidic Swamp Ooze destroys your opponent's weapon. So that's really all that we uh, actually need. So um, The Wolf Rider seems pretty good for a quick offensive. It's good, but not if you go against a mage. Because a mage, with their hero power can kill the wolf rider with one hit because the mage can deal one damage to anything that they want so if you play yeah. the wolf rider then your the mage will just shoot the wolf rider dead since it has one hp so uh, you should i was counting i was counting on, on his charge yes the charge is good yeah. but uh it's not what we need to build the deck on because Wolf Rider is good in, in a charge deck. If you build a very aggressive deck with a lot of charge stuff, then uh, basically no. the goal is to kill your opponent very quickly. So then a Wolf Rider would be good, but uh, not in this deck that we are currently building. Uh, Shatter Hands uh, Cleric is pretty good. Put in two of them. And then go to the ne next page. Um, Sengen Shield Master is good. You can put in one of those. Uh, okay, go to the right side. Uh, let's see. Alexa have ability. You know, yes. trying to hold my character until the legendary comes up, if he comes up. Yes, <laughs> the thing is, we are just going to plan on controlling the board. And with the rallying blade and the two true silver champions, you should be able to control the board pretty well. Uh, so we won't expect to take a lot of face damage, to be honest. Okay, um, who was the... This card where he brings out a few more soldiers to fight. Uh, it's something similar. Stand against yeah. the darkness. Or, yeah, maybe. Or what? Uh, to, to what are you referring? Uh, he was like an officer. Oh, uh, like, uh, like Quartermaster. Reinforce. Yes. Yes, yes. Quartermaster. But Quartermaster is an epic. So you will have to craft him and it will cost 400 dust. So... Uh, unfortunately, so, it, it's very expensive. I thought I, I thought I had him, but no, yeah, no, I don't think you have him. Uh, you can put no. in one big game hunter. That's a very good card. I even have one of them in my deck. Uh, okay, you can go to the right side. Uh, Nerubian Prophet is pretty good. It's not an awesome card, but it's pretty good. You can put it in. Uh, okay, okay, go to the right side again. And that's probably it. Okay, so we need to find three cards to fill out 
uh, your deck. Uh, I think um, you don't have a lot of uh, early game, to be honest. We could put in one Stormwind Champion. I think that will work out pretty good, because Stormwind Champion is very good when you use it with Stand Against the Darkness. Uh, since it will uh, turn all of your, your guys that have one attack and one HP into guys that have two attack and two HP. So it's much better. Okay, go to the left side. Yes. Okay. Uh, left again. We need a little bit of early, early game. Because the, uh, you have a lot of late game, like high cost minions, but not a lot of early game. Okay, go to the left again. Yeah. Uh... We can okay one to the right. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, one to the right again. Okay, we can put in one acolyte of pain. It's not an extremely good card, but at least it will be able to give you a little bit of card draw. And All right. go to the right so once more. We just need one more card to fill out the deck. Um, Grizzly. Yeah, Grizzly isn't too bad. I, I think we can put it in as the final card. Yeah. Okay, so we can try it like that for now. I think it will be able to work pretty well. All right. And then as soon as you get your next win, because we only need one one uh, win, then you will get five free um, packs. Five free um, uh, old gods packs. So that will be really good uh, if you can get five free packs. You will certainly be able to get something good um from those five uh free cards free packs so we can go <laughs> into into uh, okay, uh, play i'll keep it like that main paladin <laughs> yes well uh, play one thing that is also good to know is that if you uh play in ranked mode uh, then at the end of the month Depending on your rank, depending on where you got in your rank, you will get free cards. So, uh, the best uh, uh, goal is to get to rank 5. Because, like, at the moment I'm at rank 10, and the best uh -huh. rank is rank 5. At rank 5, you get a guaranteed epic golden card, which you can either keep or you can disenchant it for uh, 400 dust. So... Uh, These are stronger than legendaries? No, no, no. It's just an epic card, but the good thing is that it is 400 dust that you can use. So 400 dust is quite a lot. Right. So go, uh, let's do the ranked one. Yes. Ranked? Yes. And then play. Uh -huh. All right. So it only chooses worthy opponents? Yes. Oh, so, so this is more like a joke, it's not uh, real. It is... Uh, uh, it's just a joke. It, 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 it Basically, they use that just to pass the time. But um, oh. you will always get ranked with rank 25 guys. So oh. because we are... Should I give them? Yes, because we are going up against the warrior, the Cedric Swampus is extremely good. Because the warrior is a class which has a lot of weapons. So you should always keep the Acidic Swampus against the Warrior. So you can keep the uh, keep these. This should be right. pretty good. Let's go. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. So, okay, I think I should pass my turn. Yes. Garrosh. Hmm. Basically, the thing against the warrior is that you should just hope that he doesn't have a... Uh, yes, play the Beckner of Evil. You should just hope that he doesn't have a... Uh, 
weapon at the beginning because uh, they have a weapon called the Fiery War Axe and it is extremely powerful. So you can see there it changed your Cthulhu from a 6-6 six, six into a 8-8. Eight, eight. So already we are getting pretty far. So end your turn and then the next turn we can play the Iron Fur Grizzly probably. All right. If it survives. <laughs> yes, if it survives. If he doesn't have a weapon. If he has a weapon, then it's not very good for us because that weapon is extremely good at the beginning because it can eat up two of your uh, guys. Okay. Here he comes. Now, that's not a very good card. So we can uh, play the Iron Fur Grizzly and attack your guy into his Silver Patriarch. Attack your guy into his guy. This one, okay. Yes. Uh, okay. And then end your turn. <clears throat> and you can see that this guy is also a new player because players who have played a lot of games will not use cards like Silver Patriarch. It's not a really good card, to be honest. All right. <clears throat> Oh, that's very good. So play no, your no. Euro Power and the Twilight Geomancer. And then end your turn. So now your Cthulhu has Taunt. So what if the Legendary comes up? <laughs> I won't have something to buff him. <laughs> uh, if your Legendary comes up or if his Legendary yeah. comes up. If your legendary Mine. comes up, then it's good. Then we just need, need to wait till turn uh, 10, obviously. So mm. he, no, he, he turn <laughs> Say again? Yeah, he turned defensive now. <laughs> yes. Uh, play mm. your Blessing of Kings onto your Twilight Geomancer and then kill his guy with your Twilight Geomancer. Okay. Oh, which one? Yes, the Twilight Geomancer. Alright. And then attack. Oh, and I kill him. Yes, the, the, the guy on the field, obviously. As I said, board control is extremely good. If you control the board, yes. then you win the game. So attack the other guy into his face. There. Right, okay. and the ending there. Yes. Now, one thing that is very good about the Nerubian Prophet is that each turn that it stays in your hand, the mana cost will get reduced by one. So eventually the Nerubian Prophet will be a cost that uh, a card that costs zero mana. So that's obviously going to be uh, excellent because then we can play the Nerubian Prophet for zero. I can already tell you we are going to beat this guy because he's got a very badly uh, set up uh, deck to be honest yes. <laughs> just like me before <laughs> yes uh, I think I should play this now right um, that's not a really strong weapon to be honest I mean it's a one attack and if he wants to attack his guy his, his, his face with a weapon into your guy that has five attack then he's going to take five damage so it's really inconsequential for us. So rather attack your Kill small him. guy into his guy and then play the Christ Worshipper in the middle of your hand, Christ Worshipper, and then attack your guy into his face. Because we want to... Okay, end your turn. Uh, we want to keep the Siddiq Swampus for when he plays a stronger weapon because uh, even if he wants to attack us with that small little weapon of his he's going to take face damage so it's really not uh, at all a uh, concern to us useful yeah. so there he attacked and he took three damage to the face and he made our Cthulhu stronger so you can already see mm -hmm. it's not really going all that good for him uh, here Indeed. just attack the 
uh, uh, equip the true silver champion and then attack his dude with your face this one yes yes the, the ice elemental attack that with your with your weapon and then use your uh, hero power and then attack your guy into his face not into the elemental attack it into the face because we are very certain that he is going to attack his elemental into your uh cultist uh guy yes yeah. so we don't even need to uh control the board um since mm -hmm. we know he he has to attack his guy into your guy so uh in in all other circumstances we would have cleared the board but in this circumstance we know he is going to attack our guy so we don't really um it's of no consequence we don't need to clear his guy so attack your face into his taunt guy with your weapon and then you can play the guardian of kings and then attack your guys into his face uh, guardian of kings yes yep. yes you still need to get used to the, all of the names <laughs> Yeah, of course. It's, it's a little bit difficult because there used to only be about uh, 200 cards in the game. And then uh, the one expansion came out, uh, you can end your turn, uh, which was uh, Naxxaramas that added like uh, about 40 cards or something. Then uh, uh, the Grand Tournament came out that added like... 120 cards and i think at the moment there's like at least 600 cards in total that you need to 600 yes that you need to uh, oh. keep keep a, a mind of basically so we oh, can no. attack everything no. into his face and then play the boulder fist ogre and then play the uh Euro power use your euro power basically uh, there's almost no way how he is going to be able to clear enough of our stuff in order to survive yeah. because they have the, they have the yes okay, yeah. because at the moment we have uh, 11 14 15 16 damage on our side of the field so he has to clear six, uh, uh, eight damage. He has to clear yeah. at least eight damage in order to survive. So well, he, now he died. Yes. So he already cleared three. So he has to clear another five damage at least. And then he has to armor up in order to survive. So um, I don't think he's going to be able to do that at all. Yeah. So I think we win this one, but we could have already seen at the beginning, like I said, when the guy played the silver back oh. patriarch, it, it really didn't go all that good for, for him from then on. And Magram, Magma Rager is a very bad card. Footman is also, to be honest, a very bad card. So uh, we definitely win. So now you just play Consecration and then run all of your guys into his face. And you can see, even though we only basically have uh, like one taunt card in the entire uh, uh, deck, we still are at 28 HP. So we still have a lot of HP. So um, that's the, the, the <laughs> thing. If you control the board good enough, then you won't even have to worry about getting taunt minions or anything like that. Well, at least now I had a strong card. A little yes, stronger than so well now that you will open the five packs the five old gods packs you will get even better cards now yeah oh what's this uh, that's a mount in world of warcraft i don't know if oh. you've ever played world of warcraft no i never played oh, it's it's very fun i play it constantly you know, I had uh, the Burning Crusade, my uncle gave it to me, Yes. but he thought it's a new strategy game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you understand. So, with that one, you have to win seven standard games, as we did just now, but you can play them in... Um, uh, you can play them in... 
uh, casual or in ranked, any 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 one that you want, and then you get yeah. uh, five packs or seven packs or something, which is pretty good. All right. Okay, so none of these cards are are going to go into your paladin deck. They don't seem very very good. Oh, another one. But they have them. Don't divide the shield. Psychotron might be able to go into your paladin deck. It's a pretty good card. Behemoth? No, Behemoth is too big. It it takes your entire <laughs> turn, and you you really can't uh, turn that into a good card. Uh, Call of the Wild is a good hunter card, but it won't help your paladin at all. By the way, you can open uh, sure. the next pack by simply pressing spacebar. So, if if you've opened oh. this one, if you've revealed all of the cards, you can just press spacebar and then it will open the next one. So, you got another stand against the darkness, that's pretty good. Uh, you will be able to put that into your... Uh, uh, Paladin deck. Uh, right. and none of those are really going to be good in your Paladin deck. And then in the last one. Come on, come on. Southless Hero is a relatively good card. Twilight Elder is very good. We are definitely going to put Twilight Elder into your Paladin deck because that's the card that I said. Uh, will make your Cthulhu even better and it's actually a really good card. I mean it, it costs three mana and it is a three four Which is above average and then on top of that it makes your Cthulhu stronger each time that it stays on the board So let's go to your deck uh, crafting uh, thing and then we can put in the uh, uh, okay. two cards Okay, so we are going to remove, uh, let me see here, uh, remove Acolyte of Pain. The Acolyte of Pain? Oh, right. Yes, okay. and then let's see what else we can remove. Uh, remove Humility at the very top. Okay. And then... Um, uh, Remove one Guardian of Kings. Uh, Which one? Third from the bottom. It's a third from the bottom card. Oh. Yes, remove one of those. So then we put oh. in one Selfless Hero, since it's a pretty good card. And then uh, we go to the Neutrals. The Neutral cards. And then we uh, uh, just uh, put the Falter on for the Old Gods at the bottom left. And then we go to the three mana cost. Oh, oh there it is. Uh, Twilight Elder. Put that in. That's extremely right. good. And one more. There was one more card. I can't remember. Go to the right side. Let's see if I can remember which card it was that I wanted to put in. Uh, oh, uh, Psychotron. Psychotron. Yes, that's Psychotron. also actually a pretty good, good card. Let me just see here. We might even be able to put in Polluted Order since it's a pretty good card. Um, uh, maybe I remove one of these. Shattered Sun Cleric is actually pretty good. I would much rather remove Iron Fur Grizzly. Um, oh, the Grizzly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Remove that one. Put in the Polluted Order. Since if that thing dies, you get a, a free card draw, which is pretty good. So yeah, I think this. Very good. This is already better than your previous. Uh, one that you had, since now you have a, uh, uh, a Twilight Elder, which will make it much better. We could also actually put in uh, the Skeram Cultist. Uh, I think remove the Boulderfist Ogre, which is the fifth card from the bottom. Remove one of them and then put in the Skeram Cultist at the bottom right. Uh -huh. Yes, that's actually going to help your Cthulhu uh, get even more powerful. And then let's just see the Corrupted Seer. I think you should disenchant that one. The Corrupted Seer, that Murloc. It's not a good card at all. Uh, so you right-click on it. What? I think it is right-click. Yes, okay. And then disenchant it. 
that then uh, removes the card. Yeah, just click OK. That removes the Whatever. card and then it gives you dust. But obviously, if we are not going to, uh, if, if the card isn't good, then you can rather disenchant it to make a better card. And there you got 140 dust, which is actually extremely good. We will be able to craft something with that. Uh, I think. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Remove one boulder fist ogre once again. It's the sixth card from the bottom. And then uh, go to the left page. And then right click on the Twilight Elder. Mm -hmm. And then craft uh, one of them. Cre okay. Create, yes. And then uh, just click to the side and then we put one of them in. Just click anywhere, the, the window will, will close. And then we put one mm -hmm. of them into your deck. That will already make your deck much better. And I see that's good. Yes, that's that's really good. With these two cards, the two Twilight Elders, the two Beckoner of Evils, the Crazed Worshipper, the Scam Cultist. Basically, by the time that turn 10 comes around, your Cthulhu will be a 16-16 or 18-18, depending on uh, how good your opponent is. I, the biggest Cthulhu I have ever had was a 21-21. So when you oh play God. the Cthulhu, your entire op opponent's board gets hit by 21 damage, which is, is usually a complete uh, board, board clear. It clears his entire board, and uh, let's say if he only has 5 HP guys on his side of the field, then his face will take the rest of the damage, you know, so it, it's really then an uh, excellent card. Um, okay. Let me just see if there's anything that you might want to craft that is uh, rare. Uh, click on uh, crafting at the bottom right, yes, and then type in the search uh, bar rare. Yes. Oh. I think that will bring up all of the rares. Now, we can have a look. Disciple of Cthulhu is good, but it's not good enough, to be honest. Um, go to the Paladin side. Mm, uh, just remove the Old Gods filter, because we still have the Old Gods filter on. Uh, standard cards, yes. Let's see here. Uh, um, are the blue ones the available? The the I mean, I... the blue ones. Uh, yes, you can craft any of the blue ones that you want. Um, oh. Go to the right side. Mm. Yeah, not none of those are good. Okay, go to the left side, and we are we are going to craft one Aldor Peacekeeper. Elder Peacekeeper is extremely good, since it, oh it basically eliminates one of your opponent's cards from the game by reducing their attack to one. So, if your opponent plays a card uh, which has 10 attack or whatever, then uh, you just play mm -hmm. the Elder Peacekeeper on it. Uh, let's see what we can remove. Uh, the Twilight Geomans are really... Oof, I don't know if we should... Keep it. Uh, remove one of the Shattered Sun Clerics. I think we can remo remove one of them. Yes, and then uh, put in the Elder Peacekeeper. That will make your uh, deck much better since uh, okay, good. The, the problem when you play without legendaries, like you obviously only have one legendary, the problem when you play without any legendaries is that your opponent can anytime play a legendary which has like uh, 8 attack or 9 attack or 10 attack and then you're screwed unless you have an answer for it and Elder Peacekeeper is one answer and then the big game hunter which is the 5 mana cost card is another answer so at least now you have two answers for big cards if mm -hmm. your opponent plays big cards and there is always Consecration well Consecration isn't going to do a whole lot of damage against a 
uh, 8 attack, 8 HP guy, you know, since it only deals 2 damage. So, uh, Consecration okay. is good if your opponent has a lot of small guys. Uh, but uh, otherwise, Consecration is extremely good if you can uh, combo it with uh, Equality. Equality is very good, but you don't have Equality right now. You, you still need to craft Equality. Equality costs okay. 100 dust. So, um, eventually when you have Equality, then you will be able to use it in conjunction with uh, Consecration. As you saw with... In the game that I played, that you spectated, I used equality, yeah. and the one guy had like six attack, six HP, and the other guy had like four attack, four HP, and I ran my one health guys into his guys. So it's an extremely good value, since uh, yeah. your 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 guy, which you generated with your hero power, is able to kill a six attack, six HP guy, just when you use um, equality. But you will get equality eventually. You should be able to beat these low low level guys with a deck like this so you can head into your next uh match it, it should go a lot better now since you have uh <laughs> better quality uh cards than you had the previous okay. time and then basically with a deck like this the only thing that i will constantly remind you of is that you need to do board control you need to board control the whole time so don't run your stuff yes. into, the, into the face un unnecessarily unless you have a taunt on the field. Like I said, if you have a taunt, then there's no need to attack your guys, your guys into his guys, since he is forced to run his guys into your guys, you know? Yes. Yes. So, you know, sometimes I a <laughs> amount of cards in my hand. Yes. You know, it's like one card, it's turn. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it's bad if that happens, but but hopefully, like I mean, in the in the previous game, we had more than enough cards to. Yeah, the previous was fine. Yes. Probably, the second game I win. Yes. <laughs> so, do you want to play one now? Then I can guide you through it again. Uh, yeah, let's go once more. You can play ranked. It, it, it's fine. All right. Yes. Like I said, at the end of the month. Uh, uh, the higher your rank is, the better, because you will get uh, a chest at the end of the month, which will reward you for obtaining a high rank. So, right. basically each month I ra reach rank 5 and then I, I, I stop playing, because the rank 5 gives the highest possible rewards. So th right. throw away Psychotron and Skerum Cultist. We don't want those. Yes, just All like right. that. Basically, the a good rule of thumb is always throw away the the high mana cost stuff because obviously, oh, of course, um, if you have a six mana cost guy in your hand, you can't play it until drank, uh, uh, uh uh, turn six, you know, so it's it's not a very good card at all. So you need to try to get uh, the lowest possible mana cost cards uh, that you can. And this guy, mm -hmm. I think, uh, already made a huge mistake. Using the coin to use your hero power is very bad. Play uh, Beckoner of Evil. Mm, all right. And then in so you can destroy that attempt. Yes, and then end your turn. Well, that's actually quite surprising, but it's fine. We will be able to kill it. You play your Shattered Sun Cleric on your own guy. Yes, yeah, Shattered mm -hmm. Sun Cleric on your own guy. Yes, and then attack his red totem, the red one. Yes. So you see there in that instance Shatter Sun Cleric was extremely good since it allowed us to kill his guy. Without the Shatter Sun Cleric we wouldn't have been able to kill his, his yeah, guy. He made, he made a nice combination with the uh, totems. <laughs> yes, it, it is a very big thing that you have to worry about with uh, Shaman because Shamans have that red totem which gives the adjacent minions plus two attack. So 
Um, that's just another reason why I always say you have to clear the board always, because let's say yes. you attacked into his face with only that totem on the field. Then, if he played the uh, totem which he did, then his totem would have to attack and then he would be able to kill your guy. So, it's always All best right. to, to, to clear the field. So, run your uh, 3 attack, uh, 4 HP guy into his 2 attack, 2 HP guy. Yes. And then run your guy into his totem. And then we can play uh, Stuart of Darkshire. Yes. And then end your turn. Normally, in, in that turn, there would be two choices. You could either play Twilight Geomancer and use your hero power, or you could simply play uh, the uh, uh, Steward of Darkshire. But it's actually better there to play the Steward of Darkshire. So here you can use the Elder Peacekeeper on his guy. So use your Elder Peacekeeper on, on, on his guy. Alright. Yes. You should just be very careful because you can also use it on your own guys. So you don't want to reduce your own guys uh, okay. attack to one. So always be very careful. Then it, run both of your guys into his guy. His guy on the field, yes. And then uh, use your uh, Euro Power. Right. And then end turn. The only way how he can come back now from a board like this is if he has AoE. If he doesn't have AoE, then then we pretty much win the game since we have so much board control at the moment. Now he brought more at the times. Yeah, it's fine. We will be able to run our little guy into his totem. So uh, right. run your little guy into his totem and then uh, play the uh, crazed worshipper. Yes, and attack everything into his face, obviously. Yes, this guy is Can't feeling the pain at the moment. Like I said, yes. the only way how he can win is if he has Lightning Storm, which is a, a thing that deals two damage to your entire board. So your two little guys mm. will die, but your big guy with the taunt will still survive. Right. Let's see. <clears throat> He's thinking of it. Okay, that's a oh. pretty big guy, unfortunately, but... Uh, oh, the True Silver Champion saves us. So equip the True Silver Champion, then attack his fire dude, and then attack your 3-1 into his fire dude also. And then use your Yarrow Power. Okay. Nice. <clears throat> It's all about the field control. <laughs> yes, if you control the board, there's really very few situations where your opponent will be able to come back. A few of the situations is like, uh, like I said, equality and consecration. If you play equality and consecration, then you reduce your opponent's side of the field to 1 HP, and then the consecration obviously kills them because they have 1 HP. But Fortunately, because we are going up against a Shaman and not a, a Paladin, uh, there's really no chance of the, the opponent uh, doing that. So, like he made him a frog. Oh. Yes, he turned your 3-6 into a frog, unfortunately, which is, isn't good for us, obviously. So, um, run your 1-1 one -one into his 1-1 one -one and then play the uh, Guardian of Kings. The yellow, yellow guy, yes, and then just end your turn. Uh, we are not going to use our weapon. We want to All use right. our weapon when he has a guy on the field. Because as I said, the weapon you want to use to eat up two of his guys. Because that way you get a lot of uh, value. Now, unfortunately, okay. that guy is massive. We are going to have a hard time dealing with that guy. But I think... Uh, Play uh, Psychotron and play Polluted Order and end your turn 
uh, then uh, the next turn we will be able to use Cthulhu on him. So just en end your turn now. Oh, okay. And the reason why we did that is because the only other option that we really had was to run our 5-6 uh, guy and our weapon into that 6-7 guy. And that obviously would have hurt quite a lot. We would have taken 7 damage to the face. So that wouldn't have been all that fun. So now the correct option for him is to attack into our face. Now, unfortunately for him, he didn't make the correct uh, option. Because, like I said, uh, sometimes if you have a taunt, then it's better to just attack your opponent's face. Because you know yes, exactly. he has to run into your guys. So he made the incorrect decision there. Uh, it was a nice chance to do some damage, but... Yes, yeah. uh, we could oh. do the Consecration, but it's really not all that good. Uh, I think the... Yes. Let me think what will be the best thing here. I think uh, attacking his 7-3 uh, with your loot order uh, is the best. Yes, the polluted order. So that, run that guy into his 7-3. And then we play the Cthulhu. Here he comes. Oh my, oh. So that was just seven, uh, or that was just eight damage. So imagine if your Cthulhu yeah. is a 20 20 or something like that. Now you can just end your turn. Yeah, he would be dead. Yes. So that, that just shows you how powerful uh, Cthulhu is. It wiped his board, and now uh, there's an 8 8 on the board that he has to deal with. So. Um, Cthulhu is really a powerful card, to be honest. Indeed. Oh, you bring some more. Okay, now we will do Consecration. And then you will attack your face into uh, his face. And then attack your Cthulhu into his face also. So attack everything into his face. And then we win. So that player actually was pretty good. It wasn't uh, yes. a, a bad player at all. Uh, he hold it. Yes, we were just able to uh, get the better exchanges overall. But uh, I think uh, the problem there that he made, the one mistake, was where he attacked his 7-8 taunt into uh, our guys. Even though yeah. he still would have <laughs> lost. He definitely would have lost since we would have played Cthulhu on the next turn. Uh, but still, that was that was a mistake which uh, he made there. Yeah, and I was wondering why he did that. Yes. Supposed to do some damage, but... Yes, anyway. he, he should really have attacked our face there. So, all right, all right. do you think you will okay. be able to uh, play good with this deck from now on? Uh, of course, you... I can use to it. I, can, I got used to it. Yes. At least. Yes, and just uh, four, or, or no, uh, six more wins. You need to win six more games then uh, for the quest yes for the quest then you will get five more old gods packs and then certainly from that you will be able to make your uh, paladin deck even better since your paladin deck as you see is actually quite formidable uh, already it's really quite a quite a good uh, deck the only way how you would be able to make it better is like if you removed like Twilight uh, Geomancer and put in like a legendary or something like that, you know, but otherwise it's really quite a good a good deck so far. Yeah, so far that was a very good update for me. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank no you. problem. Uh, I uh, wish you all the best of luck in uh, defeating your opponents. And as I said...